Nara Connect Budapest 2017 and uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Ivo Kimbeck. I'm working for Linaro, a security working group. So you've been working for a while on the Opti, right? Yeah, I've, we work with Opti uh, as open source now uh, three years at least in Linaro and before that we some of us has history for actually the source code before it was open source. So where did the idea come from and why is it happening at Linaro all this stuff? Well, there was no open source solution. I think that's the main reason uh, you could only find proprietary solutions and there. Just like in all other areas, there is a need for something in open source in this area also. So uh, how is it possible to do security in open source? Is that possible? Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, it's, you don't really need to hide the things if you do it the right way, I would say. Uh, there are still people arguing that it is more secure if you don't have it open, but I, I, I don't really agree. I mean, people that are able to figure that out can do it anyway. So, so you, can, you can use uh, open source and just hide whatever it is, right? You, you don't, don't need, you don't need to hide it. it. I mean, it, the information is well known already. It's the, the encryption algorithms, RSA signatures, and the key components that actually adds the security. It's already open and it's documented and everything, so. But there's already a lot of traction, right? There's a lot of the products out there uh, solutions that are using Opti, but maybe they're not advertising it, or? True, I mean, it's, uh, even though it's open source, I mean, it's not that uh, the uh, OEMs are kind of shouting out that we are using this solution and that solution and so on, so. Uh, so why is there so much talk about Opti? Yeah, I, I think uh, you, we had a chat with you two, three years ago when we were just about to publish the code, I think, and back then it was a little bit slow. People were kind of worried, is this actually something that we can use? And I think it has grown on. People realize that this is actually a rather stable, stable thing and there's a lot of people working with it actively. And we have quite a few members now in Linaro that are helping us out with making this, I mean, to become a real product. So who are these guys, for example? These guys are from my team, so it's David and Jens. Uh, yeah. So what kind of stuff have you been doing? I I'm mainly working with the Opti. I'm one of the uh, main programmers. And, uh, and you? And you well, I've recently been working on the IoT bootloader that is in another video. And yeah. I, before that, was working on uh, Opti with some specific application for that. So, uh, so it's definitely working, right? Uh, or how much work is there to do still? Uh, it depends what, how you define working, but I mean, it, it, it's used in some products today on the market. So it is working in that sense. But for sure, we have gaps also. Uh, if you want to hear things that doesn't work or that more work to do is like uh, pin inputs, graphical, I mean, secure, uh, secure display and so on. That is something that we still have some work to do. Because uh, uh, so it would it'd be great if, uh, is it, uh, does it have to do with the phone, for example? There would be like a secure way of entering a pin? Uh, for example, yeah. For and example. Uh, that, that's not yet implemented? Well, <laughs> the secure side, we have some code that is working. But the thing is, like, since we're now open source, Linaro, we would like to upstream everything. It's not that easy. I mean, if you're a, a SOC, you, you can take shortcuts and make this work. But we would like to get into agreement with all the maintainers involved and everything. So it's quite a big process for us to, to get that started. So uh, since you're doing all this uh, work with the... With the uh, security. Uh, has this influenced how ARM has designed the Cortex M33? Uh, like, with you in mind? Well, like, to get all this stuff uh, more secure in the IoT, right? Well, no, I wouldn't say that what we have done have influenced them. I mean, I mean, they they have a quite, they have a, a team with security people also doing this work, and the V8M work that I guess we will see more about that by the end of year. It looks a bit different to what we're used to in the Cortex-A environment. So you're working mostly on the Cortex-A? Well, so far. I mean, with David starting in with MCU boot, we are starting to put people into uh, the M-sphere also. So how do, you, how do you put people into the M-sphere? How does that work? How do you get this stuff over to Cortex-M? Well, we don't really... <laughs> Architecture-wise, they're different, so we're not yeah. really moving things from A to M. I mean, we're, we are using what is coming from uh, other people that have been leading the work, so to say. And in this case, I would say it's ARM. Yeah. 
It's one of the biggest uh, challenges right now with art, right? Security. Really? It's the most, maybe the most important, you would say, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's more important than performance, it's more important than power consumption, it's more important than everything else. Yeah. I guess everyone says that their area is the most important, but I think they need to play well together also. We have had a couple of discussions this week where if you think them as separate component, they might be good or working, but if you're actually starting to interact with each other, you can still have quite a few things that you need to sort out. So, uh, I, won't, I won't say it's you guys, but uh, um, what's it called? Somebody hacked some IoT devices and destroyed the US internet for eight hours or something. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so, there's a lot of pressure on you, right, to get this right? <laughs> 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 what you're doing right now is a big deal? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's. I mean, in some cases, if you break something, it might not be that bad, but there could be applications. I mean, personal information, you wouldn't be happy if all your money got in some other people's hands without you knowing it. If there isn't that much, maybe it's better. Well, okay, then we should start by having you as a target. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I mean, sometimes people ask about is it possible to get 100% security, and I think that's impossible. I think you should make it as hard as possible so it's not it's not really worth doing it. It will cost too much and you will only gain a little bit of information. I mean, that's so you are sure that you're making it really hard for these guys? We're trying. <laughs> and you, you're working with them, right? You're telling them, hey, give us some, some feedback, right? That would be nice. I mean, you have uh, uh, IRC uh, logins and stuff and you go and uh, yeah. chat around with the, the people that hacked the Hillary Clinton? No, not really. I not mean, really? Uh, no. But I mean, it's, uh, for sure it would be nice if people were uh, kind of scrutinized the solutions a little bit more. I mean, we have, uh, we have our way of verifying things and so on. And for Opti, we have a quite big test suite, a lot of mm -hmm. test cases running. Um, but still, we, I mean, when we develop a feature and we, we're kind of happy with it and test cases are passing, then you don't pay that much, that much attention to it anymore. But the, the bad guys, if we say so, they can probably spend quite a lot of time c continuing trying to find out if, their issues and so on. So uh, is it fun to work in uh, security, uh, to work on this kind of stuff? Of course, it's very fun and challenging. Uh, and uh, do, did you cover all the bases? You need to cover everything and do you, do you have to think about it or how does it work? To you have to be critical when you do coding and, and think of ways how it can break and stuff. And you have experience in breaking things and fixing them and stuff like uh, that? <laughs> no, not that much in, in uh, breaking. Not officially, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, that's cool. So uh, this has been a productive NeuroConnect? Yeah, I think so. You have lots of meetings. It was really difficult to find you at yeah, the time. I, what I, what I, kind of meetings do you have? Oh, I mean, I have meetings with, uh, you can imagine all the members that are interested in talking about security. And then we have overlaps. I mean, some people, I just came from a session that I had about uh, power management and security. So there we have one area. And we have, uh, Je Jen Jens yeah. and I, we had one session about uh, an idea that we would like to use device tree in firmware. So that's another set of people. So basically, let's walk just over here. Uh, you are in the embedded embedded space right here. Uh, and then there's a, there's a LHG, the home group. We have quite a lot of things. To, yeah, we have quite a lot of things to do with LHG also. Servers? Well, we have touched servers. Uh, there are some of our members that are using servers and they have been playing with Opti also. Um, yeah. And uh, some other? LMG, I mean the mobile team, of course. The mobile team, yeah. That is another team that we need to interact with since we have Android and AOSP and so on. Um, everybody? Everybody. I mean, I, I think I've been in five meetings with ARM this week in, in different both Cortex A and M and everything. So, and uh, are people coming with revolutionary new ideas, and you're saying, "Oh my God, this is great! Let's put it in." There are new ideas. I mean, there are things that there are companies, for example, working with things that we don't really know about, and they could actually have been working with it for a while, and that could that typically connect. If either they go public with it officially, or they introduce it to us the first time. So there's always some kind of new starting point when we're at Connect that we didn't really know about that we need to add up. And the, the, the work that you're doing might, uh, because people have been shipping Trust Zone and chips for a long time, and maybe they weren't using them so much. 
So maybe there will be much more use of Trust Zone now. I definitely think it has. I mean, it is used in quite a few products today, but you're right. I mean, it had quite a slow start. It's been uh, available on ARM chips since 2004 or 5, maybe even a bit sooner than that. So. I think I did a video 10 years ago about it. And yeah, exactly. Said, oh my god, we can get rid of passwords. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's still passwords. It's still passwords. I mean, that's that's um, another thing that people are working with. I, you're probably aware of uh, Fight Alliance, I guess. Okay. And they're working also with um, making it easier for you as a user to get rid of passwords and so on. Are you too? Is it part of your work too? Well, we would like to, but uh, yeah, there is uh, some kind of limit how much we can do at the same time. And so. enable 100% security, right? <sighs> no, not again. Not again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can gain 100% security, even though I really would like that it should be possible. I, I, I don't think so. Okay, I, I think so. I hope so. You think so? I'm still saying that if you make okay. it too costly, and you gain too little by investing that cost to break a device, then you probably have quite good security. If it costs a million dollars to hack one light, yeah, then it's okay. Then it's okay. But it's, if it costs one million to hack 10 million light bulbs, and you can use them in a botnet, then things are probably uh, needs to be looked into. So, uh, 